Welcome back everybody. This is gonna be a really exciting video. I've been waiting for this for a very long time now. For the first time in Backcountry Beagles YouTube history, we're here in not the state of Colorado or Utah. We're here in Arizona and I am very excited to share this all with you guys. We're gonna be here for four to five days and we're gonna be exploring a lot. So yesterday we drove all the way from Colorado through Utah and then finally got to Arizona. It was about a seven hour drive. Seven hours, yeah. Um, we just wanted to get here so that the next few days we can hang around. We don't have to drive very much and we're gonna be doing a few different trails. We're gonna yep. be going downtown. We're gonna be doing other fun things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got Bella here with us for this trip. Yep, Bella, this is Bella's solo trip with mm -hmm. us. So she's doing good so far she's really happy that she gets to take a break from the other crazy mm -hmm. pups so anyways we drove to arizona yesterday and our destination is going to be sedona arizona right now we're only 30 minutes north of sedona and last night we camped here at this campsite just a little bit south of flagstaff and we weren't expecting to stay at this campsite this wasn't on our radar we were expecting to actually stay down the street um, at some random campsite, mm -hmm. but we found this trail and you know, it is definitely one of the nicest campsites we've ever stayed at. This is so freaking yeah, nice. Yeah, and we're only about probably less than a mile in. Yeah. And we we're at like a super nice overlook and it was a really nice easy drive to get up to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really nice overlook and we went up a few switchbacks so we climbed an elevation and the views here are amazing. Yeah, really and nice. we were here actually exactly a year ago today and it was not this cool. No. Yeah, in this area a year ago today. Yeah. And it was probably, I remember it being a little warmer at least. Yeah, I would say maybe like mid 50s. Yeah. But it's it's like mid 40s today. Yeah. It should get a little warmer out as the time goes on though. Anyways, we just finished packing up. We're going to hit the trail, jump back on the road, and head towards Sedona. Yeah, I need some coffee. <laughs> Soldiers Pass is a very regulated and protected trail. So like I said earlier, you'll need to purchase a permit through recreation.gov to gain access to drive this route. The permit itself is very inexpensive, only $6. Although only 12 permits are issued a day, so be sure to get yours sooner than later. They can be purchased up to 90 days in advance. The trailhead is guarded by two gates, one electronic and one combination lock. The codes for these two gates are issued to you upon purchasing your permit.
Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are we going the right way? You're going the way. <laughs> How you doing? Fine. <laughs> this is legit. <laughs> Check this out first. Oh, yeah, it's literally an arch right here. Oh. See it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> go, Belly, go. This way. <laughs> wow. Soldiers Pass is a short yet extremely beautiful trail with lots to see. Since it's going to be getting dark in a few hours, we decided we better start heading towards camp. Tonight, we're going to be staying in a backcountry location where we stayed once before and honestly it's one of our favorites, you'll see why. It's located on FR 153A, which is a forest service road right off of the very popular Schnebly Hill Road. Schnebly Hill Road is known for its amazing views of Sedona. It gets visited every day by the Jeep tours in the area and by people like us looking for the perfect campsite. The Sedona side of Schnebly Hill Road is very rocky. We're only going to be traveling roughly seven miles to our campsite and it's going to take over an hour and a half to get there. But trust me, it's totally worth it. Alright guys, so we finally made it to the Snebly Hill campsite and this is what I believe to be probably the most epic campsite that we have ever been to, like ever, out of everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I just really love this campsite. Well, this whole mountainside really, because there's not a specific campsite we like. Because no, there's just, yeah, there's so many of these campsites around this mountainside. They overlook Sedona right here. You can see all the red rock. It's absolutely gorgeous. So we're at our campsite here. We're on the rocks we go right here. And it's pretty cool. This whole mountainside is kind of shifting. You can see right here, it's kind of falling. It probably won't be like this forever. These rocks will end up in the valley down there. But you can see Snebly Hill Road, uh, the Sedona side where we came up. You can actually see a bunch of cars and Jeep tours down there. They're all coming up this way. But really nice, beautiful sunsets as well right here. Chili. Yeah. What are you doing, Bally? <laughs> you don't want to come out here. It's too chilly. So an issue we had last time at this campsite is when we parked our Jeep and set up the tent, we didn't have any cover from the wind. And it was such a windy night. We ended up having to move the Jeep in the middle of the night to behind some trees uh, just because we could not sleep whatsoever. So Ash and I were just talking. And instead of parking right here, right on the edge, where it's incredibly windy and the wind is coming from the backside of the mountain here and blowing this way. We got no cover right here. So we're actually going to move the Jeep probably just behind this tree right here. It's a very large tree blocking the wind from this way. And that's what we're gonna do. And hopefully we can sleep tonight. <laughs> So 
so we got the Jeep moved only about 50 feet this way. It's right behind the tree. And it is making a huge difference because if you go over here, it's unbearably windy on either side. So Fred, back in Iowa, he sent us some Onlyville seasoning, right? Is that right? Yeah, Onlyville uh, hot wiener. Yeah, Onlyville hot wiener seasoning, which is from Rhode Island. That's where Onlyville is. And Ash made the sauce with it tonight. She made it back at home, and we're going to have it on the glizzies tonight. I gotta be honest, 20 on hot dogs does not... It's not the prettiest meal to cook. No. <laughs> it tastes good. It tastes very good. <laughs> so you prepped this all at home, huh? I did. Well, I mean, I just made the meat sauce at home, yeah. Yes. Correct. But it takes about, I the way I cook it, it takes about about three hours to cook the meat sauce. So yeah, I don't want to do it on the trail. No. <laughs> I was going to say. And it requires a lot of different, uh, well, this time I used the packet that Fred sent me. When I make it, it requires a lot of spices and onion and garlic. And, yeah. yeah. Celery salt. The only thing it's used for, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's what I needed. <laughs> On a scale of one to Fred, how is it? This is way past Fred. <laughs> that's rude. Wait, yeah, that might be rude. <laughs> this is a Fred. <laughs> So last night was pretty nice. It didn't, it doesn't seem to be getting too cold um, mm -hmm. throughout the nights. I think it said the low was 25. Yeah, which ain't, really ain't too bad. We got a good sleeping bag and a lot mm -hmm. of blankets. At first it was really windy. And then um, yeah, it, well, I it, think around 3 a.m. it calmed down. Yeah, it even behind this tree, it still got pretty windy, mm -hmm. but is what it is. It did die down, so that's good. Yeah. And Bella keeps us pretty warm in there too. <laughs> yeah, she, she gets in the sleeping bag and uh, heats it up. So today we're gonna be uh, cleaning up here. We're gonna be packing up, and then we're gonna be heading down the same way on Shenelby Hill Road. You can go out the other way, which we're not gonna be doing today, and it's a much smoother ride from what I remember from doing it last yeah. year. But we're gonna be going back towards Sedona, so we're gonna do the same route. And it's a very bumpy ride, as you all know already. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for like a nice, easy ride up the mountain, just be prepared that it's not. It's, it's, it's going to get annoying. Yeah, it's like it's an hour and a half of, uh, yeah. of bump, a bumpy definitely ride. Definitely worth it once you get to the top, but it's yes, frustrating. Then we're going to be going downtown and grabbing some lunch, and then we're going to be hitting Broken Arrow Trail. Broken Arrow is probably my favorite trail Sedona has to offer. It has plenty of challenging sections to test out the Jeep, and the scenery here is unmatched. We want to eventually return to Sedona and give Broken Arrow a video of its own, just because there's so much to see here, more than we're able to put into this video.
So this is a really cool section that unfortunately, well, a really cool obstacle that we're not gonna be doing today just because we're alone and we don't wanna get stuck in a uh, sticky situation. But it's like a V-notch basically. And I think people usually come down it, but you can, looks like you can go either way. Just keep the tires on each wall, but we don't wanna be slipping off and then falling sideways and not have a way to get out basically. So we're gonna be skipping this one and coming back to it another day. So Ash and I just finished Broken Arrow Trail. We're gonna be airing up right now and heading into town. Broken Arrow is a really fun trail. It's got a cool, a lot of cool lines for the Jeep to take and uh, test out the Jeep and whatnot. And it's also got a lot of really nice scenic views and it's a hiking trail as well. So you can hike this whole trail and stay off the four x four trail. So it's pretty cool. Tonight, we're gonna be headed up to Flagstaff and we're gonna be staying at a KOA. And a KOA, for those of you who don't know, is just a, it's a KOA campground. It's like a campground chain, basically. If Ash and I are staying out for multiple days, like we are this week, we'll stay at one like halfway through just so we can take showers and whatnot and have electricity, water, you know, all that kind of stuff. All right, so we just arrived at the KOA. It's about an hour away from Sedona. Yep. We set up the tent pretty quick and it was late when we got to Flagstaff, so we said just to pick up some Wendy's because yep. I didn't want to cook. Didn't need to do any cooking. No. And it's cold. <laughs> it's cold and dark out. So, uh, yeah, so what's up for tomorrow? Um, so tomorrow we're gonna be driving, we have a really good campsite planned for tomorrow, if all goes well. We're gonna be driving three hours north. It's kind of a surprise, if you will. So we're not gonna be doing any, anything crazy between leaving this campsite and getting to that trailhead. So we'll see you guys at that trailhead. Good morning, everybody. Well, afternoon for Ash and I. We drove about four hours this morning and we came to our next trailhead, our next destination. And we're at the north rim of the Grand Canyon, which is really cool. It took us a little longer because we stopped along the way and did some sightseeing. Saw a lot of really cool things that we haven't seen before because we haven't been up this way yet. Tonight, we're gonna be trying to get to a very special campsite, a, real, a very scenic one. It's called Point Sublime and this is the trailhead for it. And as you can see, it's already snowed up here quite a bit. In some spots on the way up here, it's been as much as a foot of snow. So we're gonna try our best to get to Point Sublime. Uh, the directions say it should take about three hours on this trail, it's 18 miles in. So I'm not sure if it actually takes three hours or an hour and a half, I'm not sure. It, the directions are a little tough to read, um, but we're gonna try our best. And if not, we'll be camping on the trail. But right now, we're gonna try to get there before dark. So Ash reminded me, we gotta air down. So we went about a mile, we're airing down right now. Probably the best for the snow. Going down to about 15 PSI, uh, between 12 and 15. That one is at 12, it's pretty low. But that should do the trick. <laughs> Two and a half miles in, big issue. Big tree down in the way. We thought we were gonna have to move it, but now Ash just found this path that other people are using, which isn't the best. Usually you don't wanna go off trail, but since people have already done that, we'll probably end up doing that. <laughs> have problems. Actually, your tires will hit first. You'll be all right. Oh, really, the lock axle can't make it over. Try it. Hit it harder. <laughs> oh. Just hit it hard. Anything, huh? 
No, I've just never seen Leaf Springs Lake. Been that much? Yeah. <laughs> so we're 11.2 miles into the trail so far. It's been a little more difficult than we thought it would be just because of the snow. You don't know. I mean, you're on a few ledges at some points and you just don't want to slide. You got to pick your lines very, very precisely. But we've gotten 11.2 miles so far and we come to a viewpoint of the Grand Canyon and it's absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, last time we were at the Goon Canyon, we were at the, uh, the South Rim and it was just, it was in July and there was so many tourists. And so it's many like, people. You're not gonna come across there's, tourists right now. There's no one here, it's crazy. Yeah, Grand Canyon, you don't see yourself. And got 5G right here. <laughs> I have LTE. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because we're in the middle of nowhere. This is li literally like okay, nothing I've ever seen before, huh? I don't know if I should, but... Look at, literally, that helicopter is lower than us right now. This trail is also, they say it's 4x4 recommended and uh, recommended high clearance. But minimum, one, one or the other. <laughs> minimum is 4x4, which means you could take your... Anything. Anything, your, uh, I don't know, your um, all-wheel drive yeah. Hyundai Santa Fe. Exactly, not during <laughs> this time of the season, it, but. Yeah, it just gets tippy at some points, and you know, we've been in four, uh, four low most of the time, and we've had the locker on, and we've definitely needed it, getting over some of those trees. We have came over three trees that are still blocking the way, and we were able to go over one, and we were able to go around two other ones. Wow, literally, I, <laughs> I can't even make it over to that one. And there's another one way back there. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. We've seen the Grand Canyon before, but nothing like this. <laughs> it just goes on forever. So we're gonna get some photos and then continue down the trail. And we're gonna see how far we can make it. Hopefully we can make it all the way to Point Sublime. If not, we'll probably be coming back here and probably camping right here. What do you think, Ash? <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> this is absolutely yeah. incredible. I've never seen anything like this. No. So this is Point Sublime. We finally made it. There was basically no snow from where we were at the viewpoint to here, or very little at least. And this is the end. You cannot, yes. And it's really cool because this Point Sublime, it's like a peninsula, if you will. And we're at the very end. There's canyon on three sides of us. This is insane. So yeah, that's the edge right there. And we basically came across like a land bridge to get here. So cool. Wow, next time we'll have to bring a freaking tent, like a ground tent. Yeah, this is literally it. <laughs> oh my God. Yep, next time we bring a ground tent right here. <laughs> this is fake. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Look at those mountains in the distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the best part. We have service. <laughs> we are literally on the edge. That's this crazy. is absolutely amazing. What are you making for dinner tonight, Ash? So, although I really love cooking, when it's this cold, um, I decide to just do things like hamburger helper. Nice. Cheesy enchilada rice because it's easy, and it's quick, and it's good. Nice, not bad. Mm -hmm. So it's probably, I think, just about five. And we got the sunset just starting right now. And there's some clouds in the distance right on those mountains. So we're not, I feel like we're not getting the full effect but I'm not complaining. It's absolutely gorgeous. Talk about me? Yeah. <laughs> All right guys, so it's nighttime now and we're gonna eat our dinner and enjoy the night. We'll see you in the morning. Watch Hulu. I yeah. Do I downloaded episodes of things on Hulu. Yeah, we'll be watching <laughs> Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what?
What are you gonna say? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We just woke up, and it was a little chilly this morning, mm -hmm. but I think overall at night it was a. Uh, not too bad. No uh, coffee or breakfast this morning just because we don't want a seven hour drive ahead of us, not including the trail, mm -hmm. which is probably going to be roughly two hours. Yeah, we'll so far, the probably one of the greatest campsites we've ever stayed at. <laughs> I would say it is. Yeah, definitely. definitely the greatest. I don't know if we say that a lot, but obviously we had never been here before. Yeah. You got to keep trying to find even better places. Yeah. And I'm sure one day we'll find an even better spot than this. So I wanted to let you guys know that we are taking the same route out that we took in just because there's a few other trails that we could possibly take that might be shorter or even less challenging, even though they weren't that challenging to begin with, but with the snow, it does make it a little bit of a challenge. But there are other trails that we can take, but since this is the main trail that a lot of people have already come in and out of, we know that there are trees there that have been taken down and people have either moved them out of the way or gone around them and i don't know about the other trails if people have even been down them yet since it snowed so we're going to be taking the same route out that we took in and i just want to let you guys know that this route the official road name of the route that we're taking to get to point sublime is w-1 just in case anyone wanted to know so anyways we got everything packed up we're gonna be heading out right now So we just made it back to the trailhead and it really wasn't as bad as going in, I don't think, of when we were coming out. But we're airing up right now and this is going to be the end of the video. Uh, this was a really fun trip. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot of these places that we visited this trip, we're definitely going to be coming back to them next year because there's so much we want to explore. And, yeah, and a lot of these sites deserve their own video. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we try to clump a lot into this video, but it is what it is. So be sure to check out the Backcountry Beagles website. We have a blog and a bunch of other interesting things on there for you to check out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment for us, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.